Today we are going to be flipping and styling some of my most recent thrift finds. This red bird is not very attractive. It was only a dollar though and I did love the shape. So I'm going to try a method with DIY black velvet paint and some of my decrepit dust. I'm going to try to get a cast iron effect. I start out with two good coats of the black paint, letting them dry really well in between, and I did clean this bird off with a little bit of Windex before I started. Once the paint was dry, I'm going on with some of my DIY making powder. This is a highly pigmented powder you can use several different ways, including in a top coat or as a watercolor, but today I am just pressing it down into this porous paint since I haven't sealed it yet. To make this appear even more matte, I took a little of the DIY decrepit dust on my finger and just rubbed it over some of the raised areas on the bird, mostly over the top of the wings, around the cheeks and eyes. Then to make sure it did not become shiny, I used a matte clear coat by Rust-Oleum that also helped keep the beak from blending into the black paint. This was one of the first things to sell on my Saturday morning live. For $10.95, I paid a dollar for the bird and spent about 10 minutes or so on the makeover. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you're going to replicate that finish. If you would like to purchase any of the paint products or my flips, you can go to upcycledbybreed.com. I'll drop the link to my website down in the description box below as well. Now it's time to take these little ducks from a more springy finish to a fall finish. I'm using my DIY Sandy Bond. Now DIY paint is a clay-based paint. It is highly pigmented and it is also nice and thick. It sticks to just about any surface with very little prep work. But I did want to go ahead and add a little bit of baking powder. Not soda, baking powder. When you mix baking powder in with this DIY paint, it makes it really fluffy. After two good coats of that baking powder mixture, I go ahead and use my DIY decrepit dust and a little artist brush and just highlight the curve of her neck and the cute little eyeball on the duck. You can see on the right side there, it just helps accentuate her details. Once she is all done, I think she is much more ready for fall. You'll be able to take this duck into the next couple of seasons. I've got my black velvet paint back out and we are going to be painting the lid of this cheese box. I picked this cheese box up for 75 cents. It was on sale on a tan tag day. Once the paint was dry, I grabbed my Cooperative Agricole stencil by JRV and then also Crockery, which is one of the DIY cottage colors. It's got a built-in sealer, so it makes it really nice to stencil with. I'm using a one inch stencil brush, getting a little paint on the end and offloading most of that paint down onto my drop cloth. I want a very nice dry brush. And then I'm just going in with a bit of a pouncing and stippling method to finish up the stencil. I didn't kind of knock it off track there once, but thankfully these stencils are thick and easy to use. So I could just slide it right back into place and look how beautifully crisp and clean this image came out. I'm loving the two-toned look Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about my cheese box makeover. It sold for $14.95 on my Saturday morning live. This thrifted basket is an amazing shape. It was only a dollar and of a red, red tone and somebody spray painted it gold right over this sticker. Not great. I'm using Rust-Oleum Matte White, ooh, Ultra Matte, and Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. I give this basket a couple of great coats of spray paint after I took the sticker off for a very simple makeover. I added in a bit of dried wheat, and I love this basket makeover. Very simple, very neutral. It would be a great piece to transition to each season. Drop me a comment, let me know what else would you tuck in this little basket with the wheat since there is some extra space. Found another cloche. This one was only a dollar. I'm gonna pair it with a little wooden bowl I thrifted for a dollar ninety-eight. But to make this wooden bowl a little taller, I'm going to pair it with an old candle lid and turn it into a bit more of a riser. Simply pull off the seal here, 
some Eileen's tacky glue up here. This will be great for this decor piece. I used a wood screw to attach the base permanently to the bowl, flipped it over, and now I've got this beautiful elevated riser for my cloche. I filled it with a few mossy stones from Dollar Tree and a bit of baby's breath, and this makeover is complete. Let me know, did you enjoy last week's cloche or this week's cloche better? These planters I got for $1.50 each on National Thrift Store Day. They were half off at that store. They've got some great detailing and some amazing rust patina. I don't love the brown color though, so we are going to freshen them up with some faded burlap. I'm gonna go straight over this rust and we're gonna find out what happens. I only did one coat of paint and look how amazing that coverage is. I wasn't worried about perfect coverage because now I'm going to wet distress. Because DIY paint is water soluble, I can now just take a wet rag and wipe back some of the paint where I want that amazing detail to pop back through. Once I seal the paint up, I won't be able to do this anymore. So make sure you do this before you seal. These planters are so much prettier now. The detail pops, the color is much brighter, but still a very neutral fall toned color. And how high end do they look now that we have added some dried floral? If I could have found white pumpkins out, I would have grabbed some for staging. Don't have them yet, but I am going to sell the floral with the planters and y'all can decide if you want to put a pumpkin or something else inside them as well. We see these enamel pots in the thrift store all the time. I got this one for just $3.50 and it had this beautiful brown tag on it. Now, I'm sure you've seen people put Christmas trees in them, but I thought this one would look gorgeous with a neutral colored pumpkin to match that tag. Drop me a comment, let me know what you think about this styling. I had mentioned the other day that I love shopping for baskets. I love selling baskets and then i started looking around my house and realized i don't decorate with very many baskets so when i saw this one for a dollar i knew it had to be mine i wanted to add a few little pops of white into the home because the trim and stuff here in the house is white uh, i like kind of more of an off-white creamy color this one is good too i have put a few of my honey dippers in here i think they are so pretty i've got like six on my site y'all and nobody's buying them. Look how cute they are. So I just took them and stuck them in my basket and if nobody buys them, then I'll keep them. <laughs> but they're still available if you decide you like this look too. I have more in my personal stash that I can stick in there. I have taken an old drawer here, flipped that upside down and started stacking crates and drawers for this little makeshift coffee table until I figure out a better option. And of course I'm gonna need a rug here too, but Quick little idea of how you can use a thrifted basket to make a really high-end impact in your personal decor. Y'all be sure to let me know what you thought about today's video. Did you enjoy combining flipping and staging together? And if you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and follow so you don't miss any videos, and send this over to a friend who loves thrifting as well. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends. Perfect good ditch. Touch here. This bottom. Oh my gosh, it is. 
Ah.